is super cool. Oh my gosh. And what I love about this makeup bag makeover, by the way, is that this is something that anybody can do and it can be done in person. It can be done virtually. And it's really, really fun because, and the reason why this is one of my most favorite trainings to do and lessons to teach is because it's actually important. It's really, really, really super important to actually go through your products. It's important to go through, to purge, to know what works for you, what doesn't. But I'm very, very passionate about A, like making sure people are set up with the correct products. That's super important to me. So my goal by the end of this is for you all to have a better awareness of like, do I have what's actually correct for me? But also making sure you all know how you can use a lot of different things. I love multitasking products. I love products that I can use a ton of different ways. And that is why I think this is really fun too, because I want to teach you all different ways you can use what you have because it's a use it or lose it situation with cosmetics. Some things expire faster, some things have a longer lifetime, but I think now with everything that is going on in the world, there is also a heightened awareness around our own sanitation with our products. And I think people are really thinking differently about it. So I really want people to be able to use their products and not have them go to waste because that sucks. <laughs> It sucks when your stuff goes bad. Um, and trust me, as a beauty junkie of over two decades, I have wasted a lot of things. And that is not cool. So let's let's get into it. Let's get going. So I had this idea to do this when I realized the other day I pulled out a product that I hadn't used in a very long time, but not like very long, like six months, you know? And I was like, this looks kind of weird because people now, like I know so many people that are like, I haven't used my products. I haven't used makeup or skincare in like, or I haven't used, I haven't worn makeup hardly in like six, seven months, or I'm putting it on only as needed. Or people are saying, I haven't worn any lip products and I want to start using lip products again. Um, I've even had a lot of people saying, you know, I've been totally slacking on my skincare because I'm not going as many places and I have, haven't been wearing makeup as much. So I haven't been washing my face as much, which if you were on last week's live, you would know that we still have to wash our face every night, even if we are not wearing makeup because bacteria is sneaky. But um, when our products sit, it's just an opportunity for bacteria to grow. And think of it this way. And it was a lip product. I'll share. It was a lip product that had been in my kit for a very long time in my pro kit. And I pulled it out and I was like, this looks weird. Now, mind you, even on my, in my pro stuff, like I don't ever use products like that on people. It's always scraped off and all of this. However, when something is sitting for a long time and those surface layers are not getting removed, bacteria is going to be there. You know, it's ubiquitous. It's kind of everywhere in certain ways, but also stuff will oxidize. It's interacting with the environment. And when stuff is sitting, even in ideal situations, if it's not getting used, that's an opportunity for even more bacteria and stuff to grow and things to get weird. So I just, realize that was really a, a light bulb moment for me that, um, you know, we need to go through our stuff. So let's get into it. Now, I absolutely love, um, I love highly pigmented products because you can just do more stuff with them and they're multitasking and they're great. So I'm going to be talking about pigment levels and those types of things. I want to go through proper tools, um, sanitation, those, those types of stuff. But let's start with skin prep. Our canvas that we paint on when we do our makeup, our face, you know, we got to prep it. We have to prep it properly if we want our makeup to work well. Um, skin care is meant to be absorbed typically as much as possible. And if, if you're not going to have the best results with your makeup, if your skincare isn't 
at its best. But if you're using old products, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do what it's supposed to do because skincare has a lot of ingredients that react, like they protect our skin by reacting to the environment. And so if your skincare is old, even if it's not growing bacteria, even if it doesn't look weird or smell weird, there's a good chance it's actually not gonna do what it's supposed to do. So if you look on the back of your products, you have all these really cool symbols and there is this one symbol that shows an open package. Now what's cool about that is this actually tells you from the day that you open it and this, and I love keeping these on if possible too because I like stuff being as airtight as possible. Um, this is a new skin polish, one of my faves. Keep that on there to try and keep it airtight. But trust me, if this took me a year to get through, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing with my skin anyway. But these are important to take note of because you will see some things that have 24 months. You will see some things that have three months. That's a big difference. And every single product that you get, especially for skincare, has a shelf life from manufacturer. So even if you get it and it sits there, at some point, it's not gonna be good. Most of the time, two years from manufacturer, it's done. Um, there are some products that will have a longer um, shelf life from manufacturer. However, those are typically products that have a lot of preservatives in them. And I'm really passionate about making sure people are using the safest ingredients possible. And when you remove parabens from the equation and some of those hardcore preservatives that were like, eh, maybe don't use those, those aren't good for you. Um, it actually really does shorten the shelf life. And <laughs> so that's something to be aware of. You know, skincare especially is straight up use it or lose it. And that's another reason why I love a simple routine. So if anyone has their products in front of them or anything around them, feel free to go through stuff because I love, love when we're like sorting into piles. So I like having a, this is definitely trash pile, but it's not a pile. Like it has to get thrown away right away because I've seen people firsthand try and like scoot stuff out of this pile and keep it because we spend money on things. And when we spend money on things, we try and justify that it's still good in some way. So when you have decided that something is going to get tossed, like it's gotta go straight into the trash. Don't like second guess it, it's gotta go. If it is expired, um, if it has, with skincare too, pay attention to the color change. When the oils in a product react with the environment, they oxidize. And when stuff oxidizes, the color changes. So that is a really important factor to be aware of. If you feel like the color has changed significantly, if you feel like the texture has changed significantly, and if you feel like the smell has changed significantly, it's got to go. Because it's just not worth it. Like, why would you want to put, I mean, why would you want to put that on your skin? We want our skin to be good and happy and we want our skincare to work. That's, that's why I would do it. So absolutely pay attention to those things um, because it's just not worth it. So it's, and this is why I really love having a simple routine because if you're trying to use a million billion products, you're not going to get through it before they expire as well. And another thing that I want to bring to people's attention is I, <laughs> I have friends, I have clients, I have customers that try and like ration their skincare. The amount that we use matters. And I would much rather have someone actually using too much of something when it comes to skincare than too little because, um, I, I mean, I, if you're using way too small amounts of things, it might not do what it's supposed to do. And again, you don't want it to expire. So generally when it comes to a cleanser, a quarter size amount can be a good amount. When it comes to other products, we start shifting to like a pea size, a half a pea. We don't need a lot. You can tell by how much your skin absorbs, but don't try and skimp on how much you're using um, and go too little because again, it's going to expire. Just keep a much simpler routine. Make sure you have a, a cleanser that you love. Um, I love a double cleanse. So 
a cleanser that will remove or a product that will remove your makeup, have a step that whether it be a really awesome oil cleanser or um, the make off remover spray is amazing. Something that really takes off that first layer and then a solid cleanser you're committed to using every single day, um, especially before you go to bed, but I'm a, I teach morning and night cleanses. Um, be, and if you're using that appropriately, you will get through it in the correct amount of time. I feel like the Lime Life products last a very long time and they're super, super concentrated. But when someone's like, oh, it took me a year to get through my cleanser, I'm kind of like, I don't believe you're washing your face all the time. I don't believe that's happening. <laughs> Maybe we need to have a conversation about using use up and make sure you're doing it every single day. So does anyone have any questions about judging um, or does anyone have any products they want to ask me about? Does anyone have anything on hand? You want me to be like, Stephanie, is this still good? Should I keep it or should I toss it? Because that's a fun game. It's actually a fun game. And this is something, whether you're a beauty guide or not, you can encourage your friends. And it's kind of a fun thing to get together and because it takes some additional encouragement to toss our stuff. I can tell someone or, you know, to get rid of something all day long. But when it comes to my own stuff, sometimes I'm like, maybe it's fine. <laughs> Getting rid of our products is a team sport. So if anyone has any questions on any skincare they have, um, let me know. But here's my general rule. If you have had a skincare product for more than two years, it's got to go. Like period. If it, you've had it for more than two years, like pfft. one of my very best friends, I love her to death. And this memory just came up on Facebook. I think, I can't remember if it was two years ago, three, but we were at her house and she has a massive table in her house. And we went through all of her stuff and she literally brought everything she had makeup skincare down onto her table. And we went through everything one by one. And she had stuff that she had from her wedding like 12 years before that. I'm like, girl, I love you. Why? Why is this, why is this happening? Because, but it's hard. It's hard when we have stuff and we paid for it to just get rid of it. And it's a team sport. And I mean, she threw away bags and bags of stuff, but especially if it's, if it's cream-based, if it's skincare stuff, if it's more than two years old, it's got to go. And here's another thing that I really recommend doing. Um, the skin therapy is almost gone. Let me show you. If you are unsure, don't just pump it into your hand. If you have a product that you've had for a while, take the cap off, check it out, look inside, look around the rim, give it a smell, like make sure because um, there's a lot of like handmade products out there too. And I bought my niece because I have a friend that makes really cool stuff. And I bought her a bunch of really cool stuff for Christmas a few years ago. And then I was at my parents' house. So she got it for Christmas. And I think I was there early summer maybe early to late summer. Anyway, it was like six to eight months later I was there. And I saw the stuff and she had used some stuff and then some she didn't. I opened up the bottle of lotion and it was literally full of mold. Because it was a handmade product and it didn't have parabens, it didn't have all those preservatives and they live in a place that's more humid and all of that stuff, like stuff will go bad. So just open it up, check it out, throw it away. Let me know if you have questions. Hey, Stephanie, we I have a question. Yeah. I have all these lip glosses that still say Lime Light before we rebranded to Lime Life. Should probably just go ahead and because it's been a minute, right? And we'll talk about that. I'll get to lips and we'll kind of go through that stuff. But really, oh, we're just doing to, skincare. We're well, we're we're. I'm trying to follow a plan because you I'm know sorry. I love a good tangent. I love a tangent. I also have one. Start what? thinking. Start thinking of your cream-based stuff, okay? And here's another thing, and I just saw Kelly smell that. The color and texture is really important. Like, like I said, this skincare product that I got for my niece, this handmade stuff, how it went bad, they live in the South. It's really super humid there. Um, I live in Denver. It's super dry here. And the environment affects skincare and makeup the other way. Stuff dries out much faster here. And so that's another thing too, but 
a lot of cosmetics companies add additional fragrances and all of this stuff to products. So it can actually be hard to determine if, um, if something's actually gone bad. So that's something like I was actually, I, I have a, a shelf where I have, um, I, I call it my personal vintage collection, stuff that I don't intend to use, but products I love. I just, it's like my anthology, if you would, of stuff. I don't know why. I have cool, I have stuff for my wedding. I just have all sorts of stuff. Um, and, but I know I'm not going to use it. So I kind of dug in and messed with some things. And um, I had this moment where I was like, I know this is not good. And this type of product should have a smell at this point. Because you know, lipstick starts smelling like crayons. And all I could smell was the fragrance. So don't get, don't get fooled when stuff has added fragrance in there. Pay attention. And, and one of my favorite things another esthetician said once is she's like, if you have a product that you paid for, so you feel like it's still probably good, but you're not really into it using it on your face. Because I hear this all the time. Well, I paid for it and I don't like it. And I'm not getting results, but I want to use it. Raise your hand if you've ever said that. Who said like, I don't really like it, but like, I feel like I need to use it and get through it, blah, blah, blah. This, I, to this day, I think of this all the time because it cracks me up. She was like, if you don't like it, put it on your butt. Like, but her whole point was like, use it on your body, use it somewhere. Like, if you want to use it, like, she's like, put it on your butt, do whatever. But like, if you're not liking it on your face, like you don't have to use it on your face. You have a whole body covered in skin because we buy all these things and we try all these things and I was just dying at that. It's like, use it somehow, but it doesn't always have to get used on your face. Find a way to get through it. And when it's bad, let's, let's move along. So I think of that all the time <laughs> because I have so much stuff and I get sent stuff all the time. Um, and that, that line just runs through my head. All it's just to this day, it seriously cracks me up and I'm mad. I didn't think of it myself actually, but um, let's talk about tools. Now, tools are one of the things, if you know me, I like people simplifying with skincare. I like them simplifying with their beauty products, but I always actually am encouraging people to maybe get a few more tools than you already have. Because what I find is people have way too much makeup and skincare they're not using, and then they have like two makeup brushes and a sponge that I think is 14 years old. And I'm like, why? Why did we do this? So expand your horizons when it comes to tools maybe and i have the funnest news so we just had our fall launch and i'm very passionate about our alcone sponges they are a makeup artist staple the pack of wedge sponges let me look they're around here um they're so good and i love the blenderful and i love this blending sponge i got out of a habit of recommending it to people because Again, people were not, I found they were not cleaning it regularly enough and they weren't being responsible with their choices. So I was like, just get the $3 pack of sponges. They're great. When you use them enough, just throw them away. Because again, I don't want people using yucky things covered in bacteria. My, my prayers, my dreams all came true. This last week we launched bags of the sponge, these blenderfuls and we have the regular one and the mini and I was so happy about that because I'm like, now people can have multiple sponges and they can wash a sponge and get a new one. And I was like, cause this really, for me, I teach around knowing what people kind of will and won't do. I've been working with individual clients and in this industry for so long that I'm not going to teach something I know someone won't do. I'm just a practical human, but also I know what I won't do. And I recognize I was not doing a good enough job keeping mine clean. And so, I was so happy about that because they're such a good deal, but I love a good blending sponge. And now I can have people actually get the bag and know that they will have clean ones and ones they're washing. And it's just like, I literally have blender full with hearts in it circled. I was just so happy about it. So, <laughs> sorry, let's talk about brushes real quick. Um, unmute yourself if you want, tell me or drop it in the chat. How many makeup brushes do you guys have that you use personally? I mean, I have the full set, but I don't, I don't use all of them, especially not now. I'm not doing like blush and bronzer. I'm like eyes. That's me. I'm like mask. That's it. Chaps. I'm chapstick. Yep. Yeah. Who 
Who has less than five makeup brushes? That wears makeup. If you don't wear makeup, you don't need makeup brushes, but. Before Lime Life, I had like two. I used whatever came in the little palette, like the little foam the thing. Little nubbin, like the that's what I had. Yeah, the spongy. Mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed now that I know what I'm doing. It's kind of, it's awful. Well, but that's, I think that's so normal though, Riley. That's normal. Most people have so few tools and you, we really want the right tool for the job because your makeup, your skincare, your tools, they all have a job. And um, we have a tendency to like try and use, and well, we, this is just what I've seen from personal experience. So many people will use one brush for their powder, blush, bronzer, whatever, all the face things. And then they'll try and have like one or two brushes for everything they try and do for their eyes. And practically, you're not going to get the results you want, but you're also like that thing's full of all sorts of colors and all sorts of textures and you're never going to know if your products are actually working if you don't have the right tools and if they're not clean. So uh, if you do not have a good brush cleaner, like get that at the top of your list, clean tools, clean tools, clean tools. But I love just helping people expand their horizons a little bit when it comes to brushes because I find that people had no idea what they were even missing. They had no idea what even the problem was. And they're like, oh, I was trying to use one brush that was dirty and I needed four. So my recommendations are um, a good brow brush because everyone, I mean, especially now, people in masks, the, the eyes and the brows, like so many people have never done anything with their brows are now getting on the brow train. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but think of it as like, this is this product's job. And now don't do what some people try and do and use this for your eyeliner and your brows all the time. If they're different colors, because again, I have like, you're going to start, you know, if you use a dark eyeliner and you need something blonde up here, don't be mixing this. This is its job. Its job is brows. I recommend having at least, if you're using blush and bronzer, keep those separate. I love a good angled brush or one of my faves also is this really great point, a pointed brush because shapes matter. So don't like get brushes that have a different texture, different shapes for the job they're gonna do. So my general rule is I have a denser brush is going to apply product more densely and it's going to be better at moving product because it has more force. A fluffier brush, a lighter density is going to give a lighter application. A smaller brush is going to put product in a smaller area, a bigger brush in a bigger area. So when you reach for a tool, like when I'm doing makeup on someone else or myself, like I'm super intentional with it. Like this has a job. What is this going to do? And if I grab something like, especially for eyeshadow. Let me find a brush. Okay. And I'll, I used this the other day and had a wonky experience. <clears throat> this is a brush from this brush company and they have some cool stuff. However, this shape is such a weird shape to me. But do you see how it's, sorry, my camera's there. It's tapered, but it's big. Like this is a big brush for an eyeshadow brush. And you want the shape of the brush to enhance your process. It should help you. So that's why I love like an angled face brush because I work at the angle when I'm contouring, you, you know? Same thing with eyeshadow. Um, I just took off my glasses, but now I can't see anything. Um, I love this brush. I love this angled eyeshadow brush because I like fitting it and using the angle to fit on a very specific part of my eye. So I was trying out this brush because I'm like, I got to figure out how to use this brush. I have hundreds of brushes, like hundreds. And um, <laughs> I was trying to do like, I was like, okay, so maybe I can, because it's kind of shaped like a blending brush and has the density of something to blend, but it's got a funny shape. And I was trying to fit it in right here in this area, but it was just too big. And I just made a mess of what I was trying to do because even though the shape and the density were pretty good. The size was just wrong. 
So you really, like, you can't always force the situation. Um, and I still have yet to figure out what to use this brush for. Because it is just for the size and the shape, I haven't quite figured it out. I prefer generally smaller brushes because it's about control. I can control what I'm doing. I can control my placement. I can control how I move stuff. Um, does anyone have the gigantic Lime Life powder brush? Like which on one? Camera? Which one? Have it to show. This brush cracks me up. It really legitimately cracks me up because it is massive. It is like the biggest brush ever. And the reason I probably don't have it right here is because I never use it and lot like to apply. I like using it to like dust stuff away. But, like this is another one. This to me, like this brush is really big. It's floppy. It sheds. So I never use it. If you have a brush that complicates the process, like give it to the kids, use it to like, but like there's nothing more annoying. And I'm speaking as a pro artist who I do this all the time. There are brushes that I hate in my kit, but some days I have 9 million people I'm working on and I have to have 9 million brushes and I grab a brush that I don't like. Oh, there it is, Kelly. And it's like, it's my ones that like from some brands that shed really badly. And then I go to finish something and then they're covered in like brush hairs that I have to pick off. And it's so annoying. So it's like stuff like that, don't have it in your regular rotation. Again, I want people to really be like, you got to get kind of ruthless. Brushes, makeup brushes are expensive, but if it's not doing the job, if it's not cutting it, if it's shedding, like it's just not worth it. Cause again, you're trying to force it. I do also want to talk briefly about the difference between natural hair and synth synthetic brushes. I generally prefer um, synthetic brushes because you can clean them much better, much more thoroughly. They they tend to be more durable, a quality synthetic brush because there's again quality. A quality synthetic brush is not the same as a low quality synthetic. A quality natural hair brush is not the same as something that is really cheap. And so it's all in the construction and how the bristles feel. I have my bucket of really crappy brushes here too. And I thought, hey, you guys have been sitting here for a while. Let's see what's in the bucket. I have some randos in here, like some serious random things. And I am not kidding when I say I have brushes <laughs> that I've had since I was like 17. And I turned 40 um, in a year, so they're old. But like my grandfather gave me this like set from Estee Lauder in um, 1999, I think. I have one of the brushes, but here's the thing. Back in the 90s, they made brushes way better. And so it still works. It doesn't shed. It's living its best life. Still feels great. It's not scratchy. I don't use it, but I have it. I have, I have so much stuff, you guys. I have problems. Um, this is a brush that I still haven't figured out what to do with. It's gigantic. It's super floppy. Um, and I can't, it doesn't really do anything. It's kind of useless. I could maybe sweep stuff away, but when I go to use it on my face, it's kind of scratchy too. So that's another thing. If you feel like you're using a brush and it has an unpleasant, like if it's feels scratchy, again, that, that's gotta go. Um, this Except is one that of the one's scratchiest. gorgeous. Huh? Don't yeah, ever get really rid of that pink one. <laughs> it's really, I mean, it's so pretty but I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. I might play with it with the body bronzers. That might work and do like a light application of that. So I mean like, but again, I have it. I never use it. That's why it's in the bucket of shame. That's what we'll call it now, the bucket of shame. Um, this one, this type of brush is a, a, a very commonly mass produced brush. So there are certain brush manufacturers that make brushes for tons of companies. And they mass produce brushes at all different price points. And I only know this because I work in the industry. This is like the scratches. This, this one was sold with a mineral makeup kit. It was meant to apply powder foundation. It is so scratchy, it's crazy. And it's a synthetic brush, but it sheds. And I mean, like I can literally like pull hairs off it right here. Super scratchy. Something like this 
is a no. So really go through your stuff. Make sure you have, now I kind of want to play in this box. See what else weird stuff's in here. I have, oh, let me show you this. This is like my first makeup brush, you guys. And I still have it, my, my makeup anthology from Garden Botanica, if anyone remembers that store. Super scratchy though. But it's not, it's not worth it to have tools you don't love. You need tools you love. Like I want people to have makeup brushes that they love. Um, and you can find stuff at all different price points, but it's gotta do the job. I think that having a, a good foundation brush that works for the level of coverage that you want is very important. So that is something I recommend people have is your sp a sponge and a brush for coverage. Again, it's going to depend on what level of coverage you want, what type of product you're using. So if you're, if you do fuller coverage, you're going to need a denser brush. If you like lighter coverage, use something um, that is lighter and a little, um, has a, a lighter density to it. But I don't, it, you don't want floppy brushes though. Foundation brushes still need a certain stiffness to move that product. Um, again, I like having a separate brush or sponge to apply powder. Do you apply powder with a blender or do you apply it with a fluffy brush? Again, it depends on the level of powder coverage that you want. So start making intentional choices. I like having a different brush for blush and bronzer. And then for eyes, I really think it's important to have a blending brush, a liner brush, and then at least one other brush for all over type application. And that's why I really do love that angled shadow brush that I showed you. So something that is some type of liner brush, some type of, and that's like kind of my minimum that I like to have, but something like that is, so blending, liner, and then one other kind of shaped all over application brush. Um, but I like having a couple other ones thrown in there, but I don't wanna like go crazy and be like, you need 5 million. But again, the more makeup you wear, the more looks you try, the more different colors you use, you might need a few more. If you're using the same colors every single day and doing simpler looks, that's a really great place to start. But again, play in your products, um, play in your brushes, make sure that it ha you know, it, it feels nice on the skin. Check the density and it, make sure it does what it's supposed to do. Because if you have this eyeshadow brush that you, you're wanting to try and keep, but it's not working, it's just not worth it. So, and then one of my other favorite tools, again, brush cleaner, brush cleaner, brush cleaner, brush cleaner, please clean your brushes, please clean your brushes. But I um, love my mirror too. I think a, a good mirror is an important tool. This Reiki mirror that we have, you can see its reflection in my glasses, um, game changer for me absolute massive game changer for me is deciding, making a conscious choice to have an area to get ready that I sit down and I have my mirror. It can also suction cup in the bathroom, but you can have the best products. You can have the best routine. You can have the best things. If you don't have good light and you can't see what you're doing, that's it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You got to have light like in the world of art, whether it be Makeup or any type of art, light is everything. Light is everything. And you have to be able to see what you're doing. So um, we had the coolest new Reiki coming out next week, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's magnetic. So you can pop your little favorites in it because everything's magnetic and it's lighted. And so it's like a mini of the big, the big boy that we have. This is the big one. And um, I'm so excited to get my hands on that, mostly because I need everything, but you know, it's just what I do. But it's just nice because light is so important and that's very, very travel friendly. It's rechargeable. You can put your little things in it. So I'm excited. Any questions on tools? And feel free if you have something, be like, Stephanie, what do you think about this? If you have anything on hand, love, love that game. And I would encourage you, if you don't have stuff, this is a really great thing to go through individually with your beauty guide 
is be like, can we set up an individual makeup bag makeover and can we get ruthless with my stuff? And sit down, they can be done totally virtually and it's great. So I would really encourage you to, we'll go through kind of the basics, but this is an awesome thing to reach out to your beauty guide about and be like, help me please, let's go through the things. All right, let's talk about your canvas. We talked about skin prep and tools. Let's talk about foundation and concealer. So I'm all about a good concealer. The more, and I'm, cause I'm all about pigmented products. Pigmented products, you can always shear them down. But if something starts too sheer, you can't like beef that up. You can't make it cover more. And I personally, do a lot of different levels of coverage just based on what I feel like. But um, raise your hand or put it in the chat if you're like a very light coverage, light, light all over coverage kind of person. Got anyone light coverage? Who's more medium kind of coverage with their foundation and concealer? Feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat. And is anyone here like full coverage? Full, full coverage. Okay. Well, again, what, what is appropriate for you depends, first of all, your skin type and then the level of coverage that you want. So the reason I love a good pigmented product is that some days I need light coverage and some days I need more. So even if we're operating in one zone, a lot of the time, if you have something that only does your makeup one way, it just, it really becomes very limiting. So I'm going to grab my foundation and concealer palette and I want to show you because again, I'm going, I'm doing this with you all. I'm keeping myself in check. I'm keeping myself in check here. Now I used to be adamant about the fact that I did not put brushes in my palettes and I would make sure my hands were clean and dot my product on my face and buff it from there. However, I have switched some stuff up and I take one of my brushes into my product and then buff it on like I'm buffing powder. And I really like that for the level of coverage that I want. And I do use my fingers for concealer. Bop, 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 bop. Love using this for concealer. But what I realized was that my makeup brushes sit like this and I'm kind of like a jaraholic. I love jars and in my office, I have like all sorts of cute things in jars, but I love them for my 9 million brushes. If your brushes sit out like this though, what's happening to them all day long? Dust and particles and things and I have two dogs and all that stuff. Even if they're, they look perfectly clean, stuff is getting on them. Dust gets on Denver's like super dusty and I live in a fifties ranch. Like I, my house is no matter what, there's like dust. So what I realized was happening with me going into my product with my brushes is that I was actually getting particles on here. And what's funny is now that my hair actually has length to it, my hair's everywhere. Like I looked in there and I was like, why is there a blue hair in there? That's weird. But we have to keep our stuff clean. So I actually occasionally do this with my foundation. I take a spatula and I actually just clean the top of it the top layer just because of how I store stuff. And I just give it a good cleaning like that. Then I take one of these sanitizer wipes because again, keeping this stuff, because this lasts forever for me, but if you're not keeping your stuff clean, it's just not gonna last forever. And so then I take one of these sanitizer wipes and these have actually been tested on COVID. They're um, in 15 seconds effective at killing that. So I love them for my kit. Then I go and I give it a once over and it looks so much better. So that's just kind of my additional tip because again, we're doing a makeup bag makeover. We want to keep our stuff clean and, uh, you know, not all gross and weird. So I have a question about foundation and concealer. So, you know, when it gets to like the point where you can see the pan, uh -huh. um, it, does it change the formulation or is it okay to warm it back up and liquefy it so it covers the whole tan again? It depends on how hot you get it and how, because it takes, um, 
not a lot to reliquify these. Right. And so I would say generally when you are heating a makeup product, because a lot of artists do that with lipsticks too, where they melt them in the pans. Um, some formulations separate more than others. I feel like this formulation holds up very well to popping it out. Like, I just want to pop out the pan here and um, pop it on something to warm it. I have done that absolutely. Um, and I've never had issues with that, but don't go crazy. Like you don't want to put it on something hot. You know, like a very slight warmth very quickly will actually melt it down a little bit. Like a candle warmer is what I've used before. Yeah, and that should be fine. Just you can, what I do is the second I see it start reacting, I remove it. Yeah. Because there's going to be residual heat on the pan and it should do the job. Okay. But also make sure it's clean. Make sure if you feel like your product is not really clean if and you melt it down, you're just melting in the crap. And so you don't want to do that. Um, so scrape it first. And yeah, then... I would make sure that it is scraped. You could even do, like these are approved for surfaces. So you should, you should be able to actually give the surface of this a wipe down as well on your product, on your cream-based product. Get it nice and clean before you would melt it down. That would be my, my personal recommendation. Now, one of the reasons I love this concealer now is 70% pigment. The foundation is 54% pigment. That's gnarly. Um, average on the market for even medium coverage products is around 18%. So when you see how versatile it is, like that for me, if I'm not doing full coverage a lot, this does last me a super long time. And I have quite a few clients that actually We'll just use a concealer for everything. I, and again, we're going to talk multitasking. I use this um, under my eyes, around my nose. I use it as an eyeshadow primer. I, I love it as an eyeshadow primer, but I have people that don't even need all of the things. They're like, I'm this color all year round. This is great. This is what I need. And that's to me, something that can work as a foundation and concealer and all that is great. I have clients that just use this, the foundation, because it's so pigmented. They don't need an additional concealer. Again, it's what's appropriate for you. For me, I love color correcting. Um, using intentional color choices to counteract discoloration, you need less concealer. So I have my palette set up as my foundation color. I have one concealer that color corrects under my eyes and then one that I can use anywhere else. That is how I like to use this. I have some people that set their palette up with their foundation and one concealer and a, con a concealer color that can contour. Or a color like if they get really tan in the summer and then they get more fair in the winter, they like to set their palette up to be like, I really want this to be year round. So I wanna use have a color that can help me adjust as I get more or less tan. And so this, it is really super versatile. So it just depends on how you wear makeup, but that's again why I love super pigmented stuff because it can be used for a lot of different things. And if you're not using um, your concealer as eyeshadow primer generally is one of my favorites because traditional eyeshadow primers are awesome, but they can kind of be too grabby for, for some people. So if I'm doing a look on someone else where it has to be like bionic, it has to last 16 hours, I'll absolutely use an intentional eyeshadow primer. However, if it's just, uh, it doesn't have to be this bionic look, I just don't like traditional eyeshadow primers because they can really impact blending. They can make it really hard to blend. So using your concealer, not just under your eyes, but um, to cancel out the discoloration on the eye, because we have a lot of discoloration on the eye, it's actually gonna make your eyeshadow um, read more accurately. It's gonna help it wear, it's gonna help it blend. So if you're not using concealer um, as an eyeshadow primer, I highly, highly recommend it. Now, um, let's talk again, check your texture, because there's a lot of different formulations and bases of foundation out there. I don't wanna just focus on these products. I want everyone to really be relevant to what's in their makeup bag. So there's stuff out there that is um, 
creams, there's stuff that is liquid foundations, there's powder foundations. Again, we're going back to the rule of like smell, texture, color change. If you feel like your foundation oxidizes on your face and changes color really easily, like we don't want that. Like there are foundations I just can't use because they react with the oils in my skin and they completely turn orange on me. So again, if you don't like the product, if it's not working for you, if it's not the right shade, we have a really cool foundation matching quiz that I love that is, I feel like using that in conjunction with working with your beauty guide can really help you get a good match. But, you know, it's a cream, it has a shelf life. So if you have a foundation that's, um, again, the two year rule, but a lot of foundations have a year shelf life and that's pretty much max, especially for different liquid formulations. So again, you have to be ruthless. If it's old, just toss it. Powders do last longer. Um, I am super obsessed with, where is that? Let me pull it up. Sorry, let me move my computer. With these pressed powders. Um, pressed powders are super cool and they will have a longer shelf life and they're super great for just all over light coverage. Um, I love, love when people have a colored powder in their arsenal because they can help bump up the coverage of what you have. They can help additionally like conceal, but they're really great on their own. I, I, I love these. So I have three, of course, because I have a million things, but just one color um, is, will really help. Um, I, I highly recommend having a color powder. And again, they're not going to have as short a shelf life as a cream will potentially. But again, if it gets a film on the top, if it starts looking weird, um, at least give it a scrape um, and then clean that. So does anyone have any questions about using their concealer for multiple things or what is appropriate? And again, what tool you use is going to affect it also for your canvas. So tool choice whether, because I actually like using a, a, a blender full, a sponge uh, to apply my powder. So any questions there? I know we have 15 minutes left, so. Dimension. This is, I think a lot of people with, and I'm trying to keep this very relevant too, like again with mask wearing, people typically aren't wearing as much foundation, but Again, our focus is kind of through here. So if you're not wearing as much foundation, still like concealer, like focus on concealer then. Focus on what you're gonna use. Focus on what is gonna be versatile. That's why I love the concealer, but same thing with like dimension and, and bronzer and stuff. If you're wearing a mask all day, you know, I'm not gonna be like, make sure you contour. It's like, no one's gonna see my face, okay. Um, if you're wearing a mask all day, really try and avoid um, makeup under the mask. And I really want skincare to be very, very minimal, but there's a lot of people that are like, I'm, if I'm on set, I'm in a mask all day. But other than that, it's like on and off, on and off, on and off. So I don't always wear it for large stretches, but a good bronzer makes a difference. And again, I'm all about multitasking and pigment. I have heard people, and I have been guilty of this, where they're like, I can't find the right eyeshadow color. I can't find the right this. And then we start digging through what they have. And I'm like, this blush is exactly the color that you're looking for, for your eyeshadow or this bronzer. And they're like, well, but it's blush. And I'm like, then put it on your eyes. Like if it's good, it's good. So you should, it should be able to perform. And I find that a lot of companies will skimp on the pigment of their blushes. People generally either really love blush or they're real scared of it. And I'm like, can we just find a happy medium? Can we like appreciate blush and get some color, but it doesn't need to be crazy town or like fake, you know, and people will kind of go like this and I'm like, you didn't even put any color on, come on. A good product makes a big difference. And these trios are, the reason I love these trios so much, again, they're customizable, but, um, I have mine with two different textures of bronzer and a blush, but you could do powder, bronzer, blush, or a highlighter, whatever, and you could do a whole face with this. This is such a versatile option, but I, I think that bronzer colors can be so beautiful, and they're some of my favorite eyeshadow colors. Blushes can be really beautiful eyeshadow colors, but they have to be pigmented enough. 
And so, like I said, a lot of companies will skimp on the pigment of blushes and bronzers because so many people operate with such a light hand. So, and they can skimp on the quality and people won't know. So I love an angled brush like this, or we have one that's like a small, it's like a really small powder brush. I absolutely love that for blush too. But a good matte bronzer is very versatile because if it's the right shade, if it's more of an ashy shade, you can bronze with it, but you can also contour. And I love multitasking. You can use it for eyeshadow, all the things. So do a little swatch test. Again, we load our brush. So swatch test yourself, like really get all up in your makeup bag and try this out. Because if you're going in and you're having to like go like this, if I swirled this brush in this bronzer and tried to put it on, it would be crazy town in five seconds. And that's how you can really judge the pigment of any of your powder products. Are you having to like swirl it on there? Are you really having to get it to work? Like your products should work. Products are here to work for you, not the other way around. So if you have to do more than like this, it's not it. Okay. So if you have to do more than this, and I tap that still. So Stephanie, I have found that some of my blushes, um, when I first get them, I kind of do have to really rough up the top in order for it to start. Like some giving of me that the is how they are poured. If it's a mm -hmm. wet pour powder or if it's a dry press. There's two different ways to actually get it into the pan. And so some powder products, especially if they have a texture in them, yeah, um, that's a wet pour because there's, there's a shimmer component in there. And so what happens is it pours into the pan and then the wet component evaporates out and that can leave a little bit of a film. However, if you ever feel like it's, like it's excessive, call customer service and be like, girl, my brush blush is hard. Okay. Because it should not be that it, it is just a thing to how we get it in any, any product. It's like there, those are the two main ways to get powder product in where it's a pigment that's pressed in there a certain way, or if it's poured and then the stuff evaporates out. I've but, never had anything excessive. Okay. With my blood. I just wrapped up the top a little bit. Well, remember when the, the first Danessa palette was like yeah. all jacked? That's what yeah. happened. It was just, um, it, the it left more of a film. So I'm always like, if, if it's with any product to anywhere, whether it's Lime Life, anything, if you feel like there's a problem with it, if you feel like you're having to work too hard, let someone know. But that's, this is kind of the test with blushes and bronzers because there are so many blushes that I've tried and I'm like, that's a beautiful color. And then I go to use it and it's like, oh, nothing's happening. Like it sh really shouldn't take more than that. And something like this is so multifaceted. I like having something that makes it very easy and intuitive to shape, shade, add dimension. Because when we do our foundation, we take away the good dimension and the good color a lot of times. And so you want something that makes it very easy to build that back in. And don't be afraid when it comes to blush. Oh, I find a lot of people are afraid of color. My general rule is find the color you like and then go one louder. <laughs> If you're afraid of blush, some people are like, I, I've got it. It's it. But when we put on color on our face, it can look one way. And then once it kind of settles in, it can kind of go away if you're not doing enough or if it's not enough color. And the point of blush isn't to just pretend like you put on makeup. It's to add that color back in, you know, same thing with bronzer. So check and make sure it really it's performing and has the appropriate pigment level. And I always, um, I love when people have a matte bronzer in their arsenal that's not too warm. So again, that is very personal. Um, get with your beauty guide. They can help you get totally set up, you know, and help you check your stuff too. Like do swatch tests, really swatch test stuff and see if it's, it's actually working and if it works with the other stuff that you have. So moving on, because we're getting low on time, framing. So the framing stuff, mascara, brow gel. Again, people are in masks. Eyes are all, you know, all the focus these days. So if you haven't 
ever played with a brow product, start with a brow gel. I love a good brow gel. Um, but, and those typically will have a three to six month life. Any cream-based product that you use around your eye has a much shorter shelf life. Mascara, I have a hard and fast three month rule. Um, no more than three months. I, again, have worked in this industry a long time. I will not tell you how many people have given themselves an eye infection over and over again because they got an eye infection and they still refused to throw away their mascara and they thought it would be fine. And then they gave themselves an eye infection again. I'm like, I know you paid for it. I know, but like, please, please don't. Please don't do that. Our eyes, like mucous membranes, become infected incredibly easily. And we have to be very careful. We have got to be ruthless. If your mascara, again, it gets smell, if it gets a weird smell, if it starts to dry out, um, Colorado stuff just gets drier faster. And it's a bummer. It's a real bummer. But it's not gonna perform the way you want it to. Who, how many of you have used your mascara and then you're finally like, okay, I'll get a new one. And then when you open the new one, you're like, it's a whole new world. What was I using? <laughs> you're like crunching on dried mascara or whatever, and it gets clumpy. And like, it's just, mascaras do that. They dry down. They have an emollient or liquid component that dries down. <laughs> and then you open a new one and you're kind of like, oh, okay, I probably should have done that a little while ago. It's, you know, so be ruthless with your mascara if you ever think it's compromised it is absolutely not worth it obviously don't share your mascara especially now but brow gel has because we're not putting it like right on our eyes it does have a longer um, shelf life but one thing i really love sharing with people so brow gel is like the fastest easiest way to get your life right in conjunction with mascara can see if for me if i put on concealer literally like slap on my brow gel as I poke myself with it because I'm a ding dong um, and put on mascara. I'm like a whole new person. So those three things make a big difference. And I love a tinted one. Love, love, love. But again, if you feel like they start drying down, if the texture changes, time to go. But I love, well, I'm not, I've never really been a huge clear brow gel person because over the years, most brow products sucked. And then for some reason, the cosmetics world in the last five years decided to actually give us products that worked well. <laughs> and brow products have gotten so good the last five years, especially like so good. And they have really made awesome formulations, interesting products, and it's been amazing. But I don't like crunchy brow gels. I don't like crunchy lashes. I don't like crunchy brow gels. And um, so I was really hesitant with our brow stuff because I'm like, I can't recommend it if it's it going to be crunchy and weird. But in the Amaze box, we've had these little mini clear ones and they've been fun to play with because I use the brow pencil quite a bit when I do more of a look. And I really like pairing a clear with um, for my texture of brows to get them in line and then a powder, but um, this is really great for um, when I do teen lessons. I teach the, the teens to start using a clear brow gel first to tame their brows because we all know, like I know when I was a teenager, especially in my younger teen years, I had the most insane eyebrows ever. And I'm like, why didn't anyone give me a brow gel? That's rude, I could have used that. But it's also really great when I'm teaching them how to apply mascara. So I will actually, because um, you, it'll work like a clear mascara. So it's a really cool product when you're teaching the girl um, how to use mascara. Clear brow gel is great. I love it for baby hairs. I feel like it's like the most versatile thing in the world. I've been using it to cover up my newly found bald spot on my head, which was really great self-esteem day for me. But um, really think of interesting ways to use your products. But I love a clear brow gel. So I use a tinted one and I do have a clear one on hand because um, I just, I find so many uses for this dang clear and I think it's great. But yeah, be ruthless with your mascara. Don't pump it. Don't pump air in there. Um, and really watch the temperature. If you bring your products with you, um, I don't think people, 
always think about like, especially in the, the, our cars get really warm and we think, oh my gosh, my lipstick will melt, but it can really mess um, with mascara formulations when they get hot um, and bacteria can grow more. So really I don't, um, I don't recommend ever leaving your mascara in your car. And it seems like I should go without saying, but my mom does it all the time. And I'm like, mom, stop it. Hey, Stephanie, real quick before we close up, what about um, eyeshadow? So eyeshadow is one of those things where it kind of follows the general powder rules. Like I talked about with bronzer and blush, you really have to test the quality of it. I know so many people that are like, I love this palette. It's so beautiful. But then we start going through stuff and they intention, I'm like, pay attention when you use this. Does it work the way you want it to? Does it last? And again, it's that rule of, let me grab one of my eyeshadow palettes or grab my big one. You have to do more than this. It's not it. If you have to do more than, if you're, and this is what I see, people go in and they're like, and that's what throws people when they shift to these eyeshadows for the first time. I have to coach people like, I know you're probably used to having to go into your eyeshadow like this. Please don't do that with these. You are going to have the shock of a lifetime when you go to use it because they're so soft and pigmented. Eyeshadow lasts a very long time if you keep it clean. So if that's again, but it's you're using it on your eyes. So you have to use clean brushes. Please, please, please clean your eyeshadow brushes, especially because you don't want to contaminate. But watch for the film. If you feel like something is getting weird, you know, that's that's an indication. And I know this. I remember when I was in aesthetic school, this one time this girl was like doing her eyeshadow at like the community table. I have never seen such a disgusting eyeshadow palette in my entire life. Generally, dry things like bacteria can't grow the same and like microbes can't grow and live the same on dry surfaces generally. But we have oils in our skin. We our eyelids are very oily. So if we are continually using dirty brushes and then putting that back in there, there you are getting oils on this and then putting that on the surface of your product, and then it gives it an opportunity to grow. So again, that's why I really recommend keeping your stuff, you know, your brushes clean, you can wipe stuff down, but you know, really you got to check your stuff and make sure, even if you have a palette that you think is beautiful looking at it, what it looks like staring at it means nothing. It's how it performs. So do those checks, really swatch, see how it wears. If you can't take a color with a small brush and basically draw a line with it, to me, that's like my test. Even with something like this, a bronzer, I can take it and I can like draw a line with it very easily. That's like my bronzer. And I just tapped it in there and went like that. That's a test that I like to do with a lot of um, eyeshadows. So finishing up, we're three minutes over, but lips. Lips are kind of an interesting thing now because so many people are in masks all the time. And, but I'm seeing a resurgence because people are still on Zoom all the time and they're not, you know, like, places they're out and about, it's like their masks on and then it's off. I am super obsessed with being able to use products on my lip and cheek. So focus on what textures you want. Kelly, you brought up lip gloss. Same thing. I do keep a two year rule. If you have a lip product that is over two years old, um, you should probably throw it away. And um, if you have a lip product that you have used, Gloss is hard because you're putting it on your mouth and you're sticking it back in. You know, like liquid lipstick is hard because, you know, you put it on and you put it back in and you can't tell what the heck is going on in there. So again, smell, texture, but there's a lot of, um, there can be a lot of additional things that make your lip product stay smelling nice. That doesn't mean it's, and I grabbed, um, I just grabbed some of my older stuff that I have that I don't use, but I wish you guys could see, because I can see on the edge of my lipstick, a texture change. So this is stuff that's up in my anthology. And I, if you push your lipstick up, you can actually see the side and I can see there is a texture change on there, um, which either means that moisture is leaving the product. So it's gonna change the consistency of it or um, it's bacteria. And I'm not really gonna explore which one that is. So that's a great check. This is an older lip liner that I found. 
I actually like go like this and like I have to push to get it to work. So again, if it doesn't glide, if you're like having to work to get it to work, you can try and sharpen it. Sometimes it, they can get hard, but again, like, and that's the thing too. Um, keep your stuff clean, keep it sharp. I love these wipes for um, something that can't be sharpened, but watch those texture changes, watch the performance. There's a lot of cream stuff out there too. And again, I'm digging into my older stuff. This is like a cream lip and cheek color that I can see the texture and the consistency on the top has started to change. And with the cream, you do have to be very careful. These are things that I haven't used for a very long time. They've just been like packed away. But I love using the same color for my lip and cheek because it makes it very fast and easy. It makes it very cohesive. I'm super into these balms. I just literally like lip, cheek, really fast like this. So concealer, brows, mascara, lip and cheek, super easy peasy. Um, and I love them. And then my favorite trick that I've been doing is taking something like that and then just lining afterwards. And I'm so excited for my new lip liners. I don't know if I've ever been so excited for an order ever than these lip liners and the glow drops, but that's a sidebar. Um, so again, like lip products will smell like weird crayons when they're bad generally, but I'm finding that some companies, do, there's, there are just some fragrances that can mask that. So again, it's about performance and time and lipsticks, one of those cream based things that people just don't always go through unless they're like, a, this is my one lip color kind of person. And it sucks if you have stuff that is older I'm not going to tell anyone what to do, obviously, but um, it is one of those things that sometimes you do just have to say, you know what, this is old. This probably has to go. Um, one thing that will help, again, with these makeup cleaning wipes for an actual lipstick, you can actually do a pretty good job keeping the surface clean, but lip glosses are harder. Like I said, you can't tell what's going on inside the thing you do, you know? And so it, that's kind of a personal, kind of personal choice, but... Um, who has questions for me? I know we're over, but I wanted to kind of get through the thing. And then I would really encourage everyone to just start going through their stuff and playing and see what you can actually get rid of because that's, and really see what works. So like, again, if you, if you're like, this is done by, it has to get thrown away right away. So you don't second guess yourself. It like goes straight in the trash. So if it's trash, it's trash. Then you have like your maybe pile, like that eyeshadow palette that you're like, is this good? Is it not? Let me play with it a few times. Let me swatch it. Let me really see if it works. And then if it doesn't, like gone. And then really refine what you have and use regularly and have like your regular arsenal that you use all the time. Or maybe the things that you're like, oh, I totally forgot about this and have kind of the stuff that you use all the time and then the stuff that is a fun optional. And then that's when you're, you really start to see the holes that need to get filled. Like, oh my gosh, I actually don't have a good eyeliner. I don't, again, we didn't really talk that much about eyeliner, but it's kind of follows those same rules of, um, you know, is it working? Is it not? Do you have to try? Are you having to tug around your eyes? Is it skipping? You know, like you don't, anything around your eyes, you don't want it to have to work. So when you go through and you go through that process, that's when you really start seeing what holes need to get filled, both with your makeup and your skincare. So that's what I recommend doing. And then that's why it's awesome that you do have a beauty guide that you can work with if you are unsure. Like, is this working? Is this not? Is this the right color for me? Is this not? And really work through that process together. And then that's where you can see like, we're not here to try and sell you stuff you don't need. We're here to make you feel amazing every single day. So we want to solve problems. We want to offer solutions. We want to help you actually be able to use what you do have. And then if there's a way that we can make that, that routine better, we would love to be considered um, to earn your trust to help you find something that you will absolutely love. And who has questions? I know, I know we're over, but I wanted to get through it. Anyone, anyone, anyone? Who learned something? Who has a product in the back of their mind they know they need to throw away and haven't? I've been throwing stuff away this whole time. 
Woot. I know that. And I cleaned my foundation palette. Doesn't it look so pretty? Meh. <laughs> yeah. It's mine really looks old way better. Palette. I cleaned it here and it looks way better. Of course, I clean mine regularly. So that's something that well, I started doing. I think I just need a new palette and it'll look prettier. I, I like finally got a new one for mine because our pa these palettes are refillable. I still have so many that say lime light mm -hmm. because I've refilled them so many times. Like this powder palette, I have refilled from my translucent powder so many times because like they yeah. last so well, they're all recyclable. But those, I really recommend the cleaning wipes to everybody. I love them. We actually have a set where you can get the brush cleaner, the spray and the wipes. And it will, when you go through and clean all of your palettes like that, you'll see a very big difference. And um, I do recommend regularly, like giving your lipsticks a once over, hit that eyeliner, hit your lip liner, like just do a once over to really like clean it, make sure it's all good. Emma there. says that she kind of cringed at some of the things that she has to throw out. <laughs> Who said that? Emma. Well, yeah. Emma, you're kind of in that transitional space too. You know, you're, I feel, are you, do you feel like you're moving to more like adult makeup stuff more? You're like letting go of, I mean, I still have my first makeup brush in a bucket. So who am I to talk? Yeah. I'm just here to tell you what to do, not do it myself. Duh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, this was so good. And this is a fun thing to do. So I don't care if you're a beauty guide or not. I want you to teach people to be sanitary, be like, I learned something. And guess what? Did you know that you should throw this away at this point? Or how old is this? Like, it's so interesting. Like, you'd be shocked how many people have a skincare product that's more than 10 years old. I'm like, why would that be a thing? Don't do that. You'd be shocked. I've been doing this a long time and it comes up a lot. So be ruthless. Send me pictures of all the stuff you're throwing away and I'll cheer you on. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I love seeing all your beautiful faces. Um, thank you for participating. I absolutely love being able to do these. Um, if you ever have suggestions for what you all want to learn, toss them our way. Let your beauty guide know. That's super helpful. And um, let us know how we can help you. And have a great night. Good night.